We were staying in the bush. We make our living in bush. We don't stay in town. We were traveling around trying to get uh, dry fish and make dry fish or hunt carp or things like that. And when we set our tent and then I get so tired and I got three kids at the time and uh, so we load up and we come back to a club and and Dr. Livingston was here that time and uh, we went and seen him and my husband told him she was sick all summer we don't know what's wrong with her and sleep lots too and she can't eat so uh, they took extra in here I had TP For years, tuberculosis scourged the North. From the late 1930s to the early 1960s, almost every family had members sent away to hospital or die of the disease. Today, most of us think TB is a disease of the past, but it isn't. Hi, I'm George Tuckeroo. I'm a survivor of TB. I had TB and spinal meningitis when I was two and a half years old. I spent my time at St. Anne's Hospital in Fort Smith. Back then, things were different. Today, up to 30% of the Aboriginal population in the Northwest Territories may still be infected with the bacterium that causes tuberculosis, and there's always a risk that the disease will resurface. Right away, they put me in the hospital down here, and then I went away from my little kids. Mmm, uh, real awful. So I didn't like it, but I can't help it. I had to go and go to the hospital. From there, I never went out. They started to give me treatment, and it was no good for me, too. It was real hard on me. So uh, they got a message from Edmonton. They said they have to send me out to Edmonton. So that's where I went. And when I got out there, they see all the marks where they give me a needle, and they're not supposed to do that. And they've been poking me through the ribs, big darn the needle I got. Too, it was sore. Well, I was sent away to uh, Fort Resolution Residential School, and they do uh, tests out there. I suppose that I got TB. And I stayed there at the hospital for a short time. Then I was sent away to further to uh, Edmonton. And I stayed there for uh, two years, uh, away f from my family. And at that time, they had no telephone, no letter or anything, no contact with their family for about two years. It's really sad because uh, I'm a mother and all my children and their dad left behind, and you don't know how kind of life they got. And eight months here and two years in Council Hospital. He had a hard time with the little kids. And then after that, the school built up, so they put them all in the school just when I came, before I came back. So the baby, that one is got no home, so somebody had to attend adopt him before I come back. Only if she's adopted, only that way she's going to get a home. My mother was in the same hospital, never, uh, didn't know. I didn't even know until the day I le left. I met with her for 15, 20 minutes be before I, le I left the, uh, to go on to Fort Smith to a boarding school. My mom was in a different room and they, they wheelchair me there, and there was my mom. And I was told the school kids, my mother had died, and you know, and she, it's, there she is, like, you know, I believe my father told me my mom was in the hospital for TB. She was uh, eight years in the hospital for TB, right in Charles Campbell Hospital. And I really missed her until she came home when I, 
a teenager, I came back to my home, my community. That's when she come back in the, in the summer. And was trying to get to know each other because the whole family, like it was, uh, it was strange, like, you know. Oh, it's been around ever since uh, really the white settlers came, the, tra the fur traders, and uh, they introduced TB into the uh, northern community, uh, brought it with them, and it's been here ever since. So definitely uh, um, we're seeing it still. It's not, uh, we don't see the, um, the sickness related to TB perhaps as much as we used to in the past, but the infection is still there, and we have to be very much on the watch for it. Before the 1950s, people with TB were isolated and made to stay in bed. Some had ribs removed or a lung collapsed. Those with strong immune systems were able to recover. But the TB germ often continued to live on in their bodies. As these same people get older, sickness can weaken their immune system and TB may reappear. When antibiotic drugs were introduced in the 1950s, most people could be cured but many others were still exposed to the TB germ but did not realize it. I think many, many people in, in the North back in uh, previous uh, decades uh, were infected uh, as young people and uh, we're just seeing them as they get older uh, uh, break down and become infectious. Uh, also, our, our, um, the way, way we live here, we're, we, we're inside a lot, you know, particularly in the winter and TB is spread through uh, coughing, so it's, it's very, it's really quite infectious. So uh, I think it's a product of the fact that we tend to crowd together in, in, inside houses and buildings and offices uh, in the winter. But I was, I started feeling like numbness and there was deep coughing and nighttime I'd sweat, you know, for no reason, all night. And when I get up, I'd have a deep cough from down. It wasn't a normal cough. Yeah. I first got this cold right after I came back from college. And probably about two or three weeks later, you know, I started catching that cold. And then I just wouldn't stop. Or, I mean, I just decided to go to the health center. And that's when I was medevac. That same day, I was medevac to Yellowknife. I think I was diagnosed in '93. It started December '92. I kept coming here, and then they kept telling me there's nothing wrong with me. And finally, I was. At that time, I had applied for a training program in Fort Smith because I was out there, and I was so finally I was sick out there in Fort Smith. I went to the nursing station, and there was an older nurse there. She recognized the symptoms, her. So she did a sputum test, and that's how they found out that I had TB. 